the introduction of their new golf. Now we can say goodbye to the rabbit since the patriarch of the front wheel drive Econobox clan has finally been retired. Even though six million of them were sold worldwide, its design seemed to suffer recently in comparison to newer, cheaper products from other car makers. So what we're getting here is an all new from the ground up golf. But when you look at it, you have to wonder if it's enough of a change for Volkswagen to win back its small car title. The front drive VW Golf's name comes not from the game, but from the German for Golf Stream, appropriate if for no other reason than the new car's tasteful flowing body shell. The Golf hatchback slips ahead of the Rabbit in all exterior dimensions. Wheelbase at 97.3 is 2.8 inches longer, overall length 4.7 more. While height is almost unchanged, width too is improved by a substantial 2.1 inches. Once again, a high-performance GTI model will also be available, although for marketing reasons, it will not carry the Golf name. The biggest exterior difference for the GTI is the inclusion of aero headlights over the Golf's normal rectangular units. Base prices range from $6,800 for the two-door Golf L and $7,200 for the four-door to just under nine grand for the two-door GTI. The larger size of the Golf GTI translates into 12% more interior room that moves the Rabbit replacement from the sub to pure compact status. While again all looks familiar, this German runabout now seems even more cavernous than before. All seats are improved in support while the GTIs are very firmly comfortable for even the longest trips. We drove this car coast to coast and should know. The dash once again is understated, with the base Golf having only tack, speedo, fuel, and water temp readouts. The GTI adds to the Golf's digital clock with a stock operated display for oil and outside air temperature, along with trip distance, speed, and fuel use data. Rear seating is now capable for three adults. While a solid folding rear seat is standard, this split backrest is optional on the Golf and standard on the GTI. Even with the rear seat in place, Luggage space in the Golf and GTI is up 30%. Standard Golf powertrains include an 85 horsepower 1.8 liter 4 with a 5 speed manual or 3 gear automatic, and a non turbocharged 1.6 liter diesel coupled to the 5 speed. Only the also all new Jetta gets a turbo diesel. But it is this 100 horse high output 1.8 of the GTI that really runs with the current. The 11% more power than last year's Rabbit GTI means the new car can cope well with its 130 extra pounds. Acceleration results were overall a hair faster than before with 0 to 60 at 9.8 seconds and a fast quarter mile of 17.5 seconds at 77. Power transfer is smoother in the new GTI with no noticeable engine vibes and a much slicker shifting close ratio 5 speed. But we can't say that handling in the GTI is also improved. Its larger size translates into a less nimble feel in turns. Body roll is higher, and the rear will come unglued with less warning. Yet it's still yards better than most competitors, but now it's just somewhat less fun. Back to the positive, however, are brakes. While the Golf has a fine disc drum system, the GTI has four-wheel discs that gave secure, if not lock-free, stops from 55 at a short 111 feet on average. Both good fuel economy, we managed 30 on our test loop, and a respectable noise level, 70 dB at 55, have also been retained, although the ride of the new GTI is now much better over irregular pavement. So, in a nutshell, we came away from the new Golf and GTI very impressed. Superior cars in almost all respects. And with good sales already being tallied in Europe, despite its non-revolutionary looks, these Volkswagens should score a hole-in-one here, too.